This is a new version of Grade 7 Math 6.2c. We're going to talk about one-step equation word problems. A math error in the previous one, and I fixed it. So thank you to the subscriber that found it. So we have a table here. It shows locations and sea levels. So the location, Denali, Alaska, is 20,310 feet above sea level. Mount Mitchell, North Carolina is 6,684 feet above sea level, and Black Mesa, Oklahoma is 4,979 feet above sea level. And our problem says that Mauna Kea, Hawaii is 6,507 feet lower in sea level than Denali, Alaska. What is Mauna Kea's sea level? So we have this information here for Denali, Alaska, and if you look, this is not even needed. This is extra information. This is extraneous information. The Denali, Alaska sea level is the only one that's really important. Okay? So think, if we know Mauna Kea sea level, we could add it to that 6,507 that it's lower, and it would equal Denali sea level. So if we let M equal Mauna Kea, and we add that lower amount, Mauna Kea and that amount, that difference between the two, will equal Denali, Alaska's sea level. So we have M for Mauna Kea plus the 6,507 equals 20,310. And you can look at this as subtracting the 6,507 from each side of the equation, or you can look at it as adding a negative 6,507 to each side of the equation. You're going to come across this a lot in algebra, okay? When we put a negative 6,507 6, here, we create a zero pair, don't we? And this cancels out. We've eliminated it. If we have a positive 6,507 and we add a negative 6,507, it makes a zero. We do the subtraction on this side, and we get 13,703 feet, and that's what Mauna Kea, M, that's what the sea level is. See? Okay, how about this one? A penguin begins at sea level and dives vertically, straight down, at two and a half feet per second. How long does it take the penguin to reach negative 37.5 feet? Now, it really doesn't matter if the, neg if the penguin is going straight up in the air or straight down. That's the distance he traveled, okay? So even though it says negative 37.5 feet because he's going down below sea level, if that's the zero mark, it really doesn't matter, and I'll show you. So we've got this decimal, negative 37.5, and we need our numbers to be written in the same form. This is 2.5. So the 2.5 becomes 2.5. That way we have them written in the same form, see? So they're both written in decimal form. Well, if it takes one second to go 2.5 feet, we need to multiply 2.5 by some number, n or x or s, to find how many seconds it takes to dive that negative 37.5, okay? So what we can do is we can actually write these as a fraction with a 1 underneath them, can't we? And we can multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal, the upside down version of this coefficient right here, as 1 over 2.5. And yes, a denominator or a numerator can have a decimal in it. It can even have a fraction in it. So we multiply both sides, and 1 times 2.5 is 2.5, and 2.5 times 1 is 2.5. So here's our buddy, the invisible 1. When we have the same numerator and denominator, it makes a 1, doesn't it? So we've got a 1 here. We've got 1s. On this side, we've got a negative 37.5 times 1, which gives us a negative 37.5. And on this side, we have 1 times 2.5, so we have 2.5. Now, we could have skipped multiplying by the reciprocal because there were no fractions in this problem. And as you follow my videos, you're going to learn this more and more. You can either multiply by the reciprocal on both sides of the equation like we did, 
and that's the real strict way of doing it, or we could have just divided this 2.5 by itself on each side of the equation. See, by itself here and on this side. So we would still be doing the same thing to each side of the equal sign. We would just be dividing by this 2.5. It's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. See? We just divide by that, and it gives us s equals 15. So it would take the penguin 15 seconds. Now, we don't write a negative 15 because it didn't take a negative time to go there. The clock didn't go backwards. It doesn't take a negative amount of time to dive. So don't let things like this little negative fool you. It's just a distance, okay? And a distance can't be negative. So if you see this in a word problem, tell yourself if it's a distance, that that negative sign really isn't there, okay? That's going to help you. Remember, distances cannot be negative, all right? And just remember, if you're dividing this by hand, let's get rid of our negative signs. If you're dividing this by hand and you're doing long division, just move that decimal point in the back of the 5, which means you have to move it in the back of the 5 here. And then when you do your long division, your decimal will be in the correct place. It'll be right there. See? All right? So Tala opened a savings account. In a four-month period, she deposited $120, and $52.80. And her balance at the end of the four-month period was $365. So what was her initial deposit? Now, whenever you see a word problem asking for an initial amount, you could actually work backwards. You could take that final balance of $365 and subtract the $52.80. And then from that amount, you could subtract the $86.40. And from that amount that you get, you could subtract the $120 and get that initial amount. But because these were all deposits and they're all being added together, we have all our deposits in the final balance. We can just total the deposits and then subtract that amount from the final balance of $365. So we're going to let D be that deposit, that initial deposit that we're trying to find. What was her opening bank account amount? And then she deposited this $259.20, right? So we're going to take $259. $59.20 away from each side of the equation. And that's going to give us $105.80 on this side and D on this side because we eliminated this. See? So we know that Tala's initial deposit was $105.80. See? Now, I know you're looking at this side and saying, well, we could have just done this. We didn't need to write all of this with the D and everything. You're, we're doing algebra now. We could have solved this like a third grader or a fourth grader, and we could have just subtracted that amount from the 365. But by learning to use this method, method, the first one was the addition property of equality. That's when we add or subtract the same amount from each side of the equation. Okay, that's the addition property of equality. We're making these equal so that it creates a zero pair. And... What we did with the penguin right here, doing the multiplication on each side of the equation by this reciprocal right here, the upside down version of this written as a fraction, that's actually the multiplication property of equality. You're going to get into that a lot more as time goes on, okay? So to do the same operation on both sides of the equal sign, it's, that's what we're using. And it prepares us for more difficult algebra problems that we're going to solve in the future. Just be careful when you do problems like this that you pay attention to the measures. If the word problem says something happens at three feet per minute, how many hours does it happen in? Once you find out the minutes, you have to remember, you have to turn them into hours, okay? That would be 180 feet per hour because there's 60 minutes in an hour, see? So just remember to pay attention to time and measurement increments, okay? And then that'll help you. All right? So hopefully I didn't make any mistakes in this one. And I really appreciate anyone who finds my errors so I can remake my videos. Thank you again. And I hope this was helpful.
Bye.